turbochargers, especially if they look fairly small, they tend to spool up much faster and that tends to mitigate lag. In this case, it's not doing that. There's a little tiny bit of lag. Uh, the transmission's compensating for it, but I can feel it. Now, I'm being overcritical <laughs> because it's not a sports car, but it is a turbo. Twin turbo, actually. Yeah, but it's nowhere near, I, I'm guessing, like the old, remember the Saab Turbo where you would floor it and you'd count to about 10? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Saab Turbos are great because you could like floor it and then you could put up the roof and you had a convertible or you know, change the radio station, then you'd go. But um, in this car, I mean, it's not made for the same purpose. This one's built, you know, for good gas mileage and to stretch out the power and have a wider torque. Now in the old days, I'm thinking of cars like the Saab Turbo. When you thought of a turbo, you thought of turbo lag, mm -hmm. and you thought of uh, thirsty, right? Those yep. engines used to be thirsty. So why is this car not thirsty, or and what have you done to alleviate the turbo lag? Well, there's, uh, there's two elements to, the, to that. The turbos nowadays, on those original turbos, were one a single uh, one turbo, which obviously came in and gave you the lag that you had the issue with. This, we have two much smaller turbos. Those spool up uh, far earlier. It doesn't give you the lag issues that might have occurred in the past. One of the other things that people think about, by the way, when they talk about turbos, is reliability. There always used to be some kind of debate over the reliability of turbos. Uh, our, our turbos, are, are the modern turbo now, is extremely reliable. We test these things to absolute destruction and beyond. Uh, and, and these things are going to last for a very, very many years. So, so turbocharge technology is where it at. In terms of the fuel economy side of things, through direct injection, uh, we're, we're able to kind of increase our fuel economy significantly. So that's the, really the reason why uh, we're able to do that. Yeah, recreational towing, I think you'd probably call it. Yeah, um, we do. I mean, what we're seeing, finding as, as a, a general industry trend is that people are starting to downsize away from some of those full-size uh, body-on-frame SUVs that they've maybe had in the past. And people are citing fuel economy really primarily as the reason that they're doing that. But they still need the utility that that vehicle used to provide for them. So what they want is a vehicle that's still able to carry people and also able to tow. And our research shows that although they tow, they don't they tend to tow much more than about 4,000 pounds. So what's your initial reaction? Sometimes they say that first reactions are kind of the truest. What's your gut sense about the car and about the engine? It's faster, handles a little bit better, that's about it. It's not extraordinary, but it is decent. Is this a car you would spend, I believe it's about $40,000 on? I know consumers who would, I wouldn't. Um, my problem is this is a vehicle that's built to tow up to 4,500 pounds. So you're thinking along the lines of bringing dirt bikes and snowmobiles and off-road vehicles to certain off-road places. This is not a vehicle that's built for off-road. 